Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be giving you a full review of the ZTZ 96 AP, a rank 6 premium Chinese main battle tank that currently sits at 9.7 BR in RB. The ZTZ 96 AP comes in a pack that costs $60 USD and includes 2,000 Golden Eagles, 15 days of premium time, and of course, the tank itself. In this review, I'll be going over this tank's stats, how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses, go over how good I feel that it is in certain categories, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I think that it's worth purchasing or not. That said, as always, subscriptions and likes are always incredibly appreciated, but either way, let's get into the video. First, let's place the stats here on the side of the screen. It's important stats to note are its turret traverse speed, its top speed, and armor thickness. Now, for how it plays, well, it's pretty much like every other Chinese main battle tank in-game in that it feels pretty generic. Better said, it feels like it has decent speed, though definitely not great, a good cannon, good armor, decent enough handling, and mediocre sights. In short, the ZTZ 96 AP feels like it can be any main battle tank in War Thunder and, well, pretty much plays like a mishmash of all MBTs. To the ZTZ 96 AP's credit, and I'll probably start calling it just the P or whatever, just to shorten the tank name, it does have pretty good armor, especially up front with its ERA and decent armor thickness on the hull and turret, but it also is somewhat slow, having a nearly identical power to weight ratio with the T72 AV terms, of which is a tank that will be competing to win your purchase versus, again, obviously this Chinese main battle tank. Either way, because it is more or less decent at pretty much everything that it does, though it's relatively slow compared to other MBTs with a slightly above average turret traverse speed and armor pen, I would say that you won't be looking at capping bases all too often that you can flank in a limited capacity as your speed is just good enough to do light flanking. In fact, when combined with the relatively low profile of this tank, flanking has been the main source of my kills, again with this tank, all in spite of its mediocre speed. If you aren't into flanking, you are more than capable of surviving a few frontal hits, although you definitely need to protect your lower glacis plate as a priority, as it is incredibly weak, especially compared to the rest of the front of your tank. Because of this, and along with the fact that you'll be sitting at a weird BR, forcing you to be involved in many up tiers, I would say that your strategy should be to play something like this. If you're in a down tier, or even in a mild up tier, maybe up to around 10.0 BR, then you can frontline with this tank. If in a large or total up tier, then you should almost always flank. This is due to your cannon in combination with the I-125 APF SDS shell, of which has a maximum of 466 millimeters of armor pen, losing its potency tremendously when facing enemies at give or take 10.3 or more so 10.7 BR and above. Also, this tank only has three crew members, which severely limits your survivability. And now let's get into its strengths and weaknesses, and first for its strengths, it has a very good, though not amazing, turret traverse rate, typically around 25 degrees per second, give or take depending on what your crew skill is. Second, it has a very good I-125 APF SDS shell that can punch through up to 466 millimeters of armor, beating the previous champion of tier 6 premiums, the T-72 AV Terms, of which has 9 millimeters less of armor pen, with this difference staying relatively consistent at various impact angles and ranges. Third, it has very good armor, particularly at the front of the turret. It also has reactive spaced armor on the sides of the turret that will protect from heat FS very nicely, at least when hit from an angle. For its fourth strength, it has an electro-optical system at the front of the turret to stop ATGMs from hitting you. Though this really doesn't matter all too much as most tanks are going to be firing APF SDS at you, and even if they do fire ATGMs, they have a way of flanking you so that that system will typically not work. For its fifth strength, of course, it has a thermal gun sight, which is really, really nice, especially, of course, around this BR. Six, as a fairly powerful roof-mounted HMG that can destroy obstacles, lightly armored vehicles, and aircraft. Beyond this, it has a fairly small tank with a low profile, which makes it a difficult target to spot and hit, at least from a range. And finally, of course, being that this is a premium, it receives RP and SL bonuses. And now for its weaknesses, and first as poor cannon zoom at only 8 times zoom, with no additional zoom once you're scoped in. 8 times is isn't all too bad, but of course a lot of tanks around this BR, even the WMA-301 has more zoom than this. Second, it has mediocre mobility, including an awful reverse speed of only 5.7 km per hour. It only has 20 horsepower more than the terms, while carrying the same exact 43 ton weight. 
third, it only has three crew members, which limits the enhanced survivability that you would otherwise have due to its good frontal armor. Fourth, it has a slow gun laying drive. I've experienced it many times where the vertical elevation of this gun is extremely slow, at least feeling compared to other tanks. Fifth, it has no neutral steering. Six, poor lower glacis armor. This is a huge problem. You need to protect that lower glacis at all costs. And finally, it has commander sights, though they do not have thermals. With that said though, let's go over how I might rate the capabilities of this tank. First, for its cannon, I give it an 8 out of 10 because while power creep is definitely becoming more of an issue at top tier, this tank's cannon beats the previous best for premium tanks at this BR, which I think counts for something. It will remain competitive for a while, though again will lose its teeth when facing most higher BR vehicles, especially those at 10.3 BR and above. Otherwise, you can still one-shot pretty much all similar or lower BR tanks with ease and one-shot higher tanks when flanking as well. For survivability, I give it a 6.5 out of 10, largely because it has very good frontal turret armor as well as good upper glacis armor and spaced ERA on the side of the turret. Otherwise, this vehicle suffers tremendously from having only a three-man crew, as well as a poor lower glacis plate. If the armor holds up, which it will do better than most similar BR premium tanks, then you'll do pretty well. As soon as your armor is penetrated, however, you better hope that only one crew member dies, otherwise it's game over. For maneuverability, I give the ZTZ 96 AP a 4.5 or maybe even a 5 out of 10, as it is fairly average in terms of frontal speed for tanks of this class, but of course has that poor reverse speed. In addition, it has no neutral steering, which is almost unheard of for a tank at this BR, though of course the terms also lacks neutral steering. The lack of neutral steering alone makes it much more difficult to move, especially off-road. If you're moving straight on a road, it's fine, but once you have to maneuver, especially again off-road, and doubly so if you need to reverse, then you're going to be in big trouble with this tank. Overall, I give this vehicle, eh, I want to say 6.5, maybe a 7 out of 10, as it does nothing especially well, but also doesn't do anything poorly enough to the point where it might be considered offensive, but I give it a 7 out of 10, I think, because of its extremely good cannon, and of course, when it comes to tanks, I rate cannons more heavily than almost any other category, including maneuverability and armor. But of course, if the maneuverability is so bad that it really starts to hinder if you even reach a battle, kind of like with the mouse, then of course, I'm going to Weight that a little bit more heavily. But that all said, like I said previously in this video, I think that the ZTC 96 AP is a decent to good tank in most or all aspects, with it being somewhat deficient in terms of speed, but making up for it in slight advantages with both its armor and cannon. So in short, this is a good tank for pretty much anything, but it won't excel in one thing or another. If you like speed, you'll probably want to purchase the XM1 or AMX30 Super instead of this vehicle. If you want more versatility from maybe a slower tank, then maybe you should look at the T72 AV Turbo. Terms. If you want more survivability, definitely look to the Merkava Mark IId. But if you're looking for a little bit of everything, including what I feel is an excellent grinder, then the ZTZ 96 AP will fit the bill, especially if you're looking to delve into the Chinese tech tree. So do I recommend it? Yes, I actually do, because it has something for everyone. Well, at least outside of speed freaks, of course. But if you do like speed, and you also want to research the Chinese ground tech tree, then I strongly recommend looking at the WMA-301, of which is not only one of my favorite vehicles in all of War Thunder, but it's also something that I have a full review on, of course, linked below. That all said, however, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, you guys know the dealio. And well, I'll see you guys all on the other side. Take care, everyone.